think, Derek, when you when you got a chance to look back at the at the tape from from Cincinnati, what were your your thoughts? Anything different than than you know than you looked at right after the game, or that you felt right after the game? No, what I said is pretty much what what, what happened. Did you spend much time looking at the at the fumble and see what you did wrong there, or did you kind of know in the moment what happened? No, fumble the ball. I take care of the ball. You got uh, 102 yards per game in your career games, December and January. It's the third most of any player ever. What is it about you that makes you stronger as seasons go on late in the year? I don't know. I haven't thought that much about that. I'm focused on Philly. To be truth. If Ben's back now, how much could that help help things for you guys? Um, you know, Ben's smart, knows the ins and outs. Um, and um, you know, it's a big part of what we do. So I know we're all excited to have him back and missed him when he wasn't out there. With the focus, your focus being on Philly, what do you make of their front? You know, Jordan Davis, Lavelle Joseph, Sue, Cox, all those guys that they have. Penetrating, um, disruptive, uh, play hard, run to the ball, um, and I think they're as good as advertised. As Sam mentioned, I mean, a lot of people make a lot of your success in December, January, when the weather gets colder. Did you like the cold weather growing up being a Florida guy? Did you, did you have to learn to, to like playing in the cold? I think it just comes with the game, and you got to go out there and play. Um, and that's all I can do. It's cold, hot. You got to go play regardless. You talked about uh, a couple weeks ago. Motivation you still carry from the from the people that doubted you when you were coming out of high school as a, as a running back. Had had that path not been open to you and, and you were forced to go to the defensive side, what kind of defensive end would you have been? Uh, probably Julius Peppers. Uh, disruptive, sacks. Yeah. Um, I'd have panned out better now I'm playing, but um, I'm glad it worked out the way it did. I was passionate about playing uh, the position, and um, you know, I feel like it worked out pretty well. AJ and just your thoughts of you know him as a teammate here and now what he's doing in, in Philly. Yeah, AJ is my brother, man, and um, you know I uh, sent him well, my, my Nike shirt. Just texted me earlier, but yeah, um, you know it's, it was, was fun playing with him and um, you know going up against him is gonna be different, but at the end of the day, you know it's football and I go try to win a game. I saw you met uh, Joey Logano yesterday. You know much about his? Career and does he did he seem to know a lot about uh, about yours? And you put me on the spot there, Jim. Um, I'm not too educated on on NASCAR. I know he won the championship this year. It's really cool to meet him. Um, we got got him a jersey. He brought me a helmet and signed it for me. So I thought that was pretty cool. And he was two two, so that was cool as well. You uh, I, I, you know, some guys are wearing their cleats this week. Some next week. What are your call? What what is maybe your call is going to be? You gonna have multiple calls and. What do you hope to do through, uh, you know, through that campaign? Yeah, um, mine has always been my foundation to our foundation, which we um, focus on loving and, play, loving and playing field for the youth. Purple and gold, my grandmother's uh, favorite two colors, represent her and um, you know what she was all about, and just being a, uh, a resource for the youth. And whatever, how much I can raise to to help, you know, push that message and you know do whatever I can. I'm, I'm always for it. Speaking of other sports, there was a baseball bat over there around your locker that was, I guess. Inscribed to you, what what's that about? Um, Ben always does that when uh, we have a good game in a running game. He always makes a baseball, and he's been doing that for a while now. Andy listed it as a full participant yesterday. Is Wednesday a, a busy day for him, or if not, when is the busiest day for him? Yeah, Wednesday was busy for him yesterday. Today is going to be another busy day for him. We're going to see how he does. Um, you know, felt really good after yesterday's practice. So um, we're looking forward to him doing more field goals and kickoffs today and see what's going on. Uh, before I take any more questions, I just want to wish best of luck to Lipscomb, my youngest son goes there. And then also Paige, uh, my oldest is dressed in varsity. He's a freshman, so I want to wish them the best of luck uh, tomorrow in their state championship game. They're winning 42. They're winning 42. <laughs> <laughs> That's like most of the season right there, isn't it? What, what, do you, what do you need to see from Randy, I guess, when, he, when he's working here practice in order to 
feel yeah, good about him returning. Yeah, um, you know, obviously we're going to take a look at the distance, um, especially on his kickoff, see if, uh, you know, his leg is feeling all right. You know, that's going to be one of the biggest things is to see how he does today and then even tomorrow how he's feeling after the workout because that's really important for us um, is how, you know, his leg is able to take that type of work, um, especially when we're going to try to tell him to, you know, kick it close to the end zone or even deep for a touchback. Um, we'll see how he feels tomorrow, though. Not an either. It is an either or situation where you you wouldn't have both he and Shudak up with one handling the kickoffs and the other handling the play. Yeah, that's that's not ideal for us. Um, and we've done that in the past here. Um, you know, a couple years ago we did that. That's not what we're really looking for um, because obviously that takes away offensively, defensively. It also takes away from us on special teams with a core player. Um, you know, if we would have to do that, great. You know, we can. Um, but that's just not ideal for us to, to have two kickers up. Caleb handled things. How did Caleb, Caleb handle things? Yeah, you know, uh, just going back, uh, you know, proud of him. You know, the one that he wants back, you know, the short one, uh, that's something that he should be able to make at any point in time. Uh, just a low kick and, and just not what he was looking for. He had a little bit of gust, but, you know, 10 times out of 10, he's going to tell you he wants to make that. Um, but, you know, as far as kickoffs were concerned, I thought he did a great job. Uh, and then the other field goals, we thought he did a pretty good job. It's just, it's just the one, unfortunately, it didn't go in but uh you know he had a great week uh or so far uh yesterday he had a great uh time kicking and we thought he did a really good job assuming bullock is fully healthy yeah. and you know kicks up well in practice and so forth i mean is he the guy given his experience or is any yeah any oh uh, i mean we want randy to come back um not that we're not happy with caleb but uh you know randy has put in the work he's done a great job um you know he's the guy for us and and we obviously love to have him back and if he can't go then caleb will step up again and, and try to do his best uh you know but uh you know really looking forward to having randy back and if he can great it was just kind of a fluky deal uh, in warm-ups. Yeah, it was interesting because he got done with his field goal set and uh, did a really good job. And then, you know, we kind of go off and I, I go with the punter. And then all of a sudden it was kind of him warming up on his kickoffs. Um, just felt something a little bit. And, uh, you know, when that starts to happen, then all of a sudden it's a big chain um, reaction. Okay, who are we going to have kick off? Hey, let's get Stoney ready after he punts uh, to do some kickoff. So, um, you know, it's just one of those freak things that end up happening. And he felt a little tightness, and, uh, you know, we had to move on to the next guy. How often do you talk about not hitting the snapper in the head and neck area? Yeah, and, yeah. and, you know, just a couple guys getting a little overzealous there? Sure, just, just unfortunate. Um, you know, our guys are going to give all out effort. Um, you know, we got to continue to do a better job of um, relaying to those guys that don't, don't even make it close. You know, and, you know, our guys are going to try to go in there every single time and play with all out effort to try to block a kick, which is what we want. We just got to make sure we end up coaching a little bit more and better uh, where these guys don't make it close because we know the officials are going to be looking at certain things. And, uh, you know, we, we just got to do we got to do a better job as far as coaches. How do you coach it more and better? Mike says there's like one or two things officials are looking for. That. Yeah. So you haven't coached it more and better before the penalty happens. Well, uh, have you been negligent there? No, I don't think so. I think what we got to do a little bit better is, uh, you know, teaching the technique that we're looking for because their guards were really coming down in on that A-gap. So when we would try to go and knock back the guard, um, you know, they came down hard on us and then uh, strong and tart end up moving down a little bit too much. But, uh, you know, we're going to really focus in today and yesterday on really trying to V technique and get those guards getting knocked back instead of getting closer to the center. When it comes to kicking there at the link, that wind comes in and it circles oh, yeah. around. How do you find out, like, what to, to gauge for the wind? Because I know, like, at, at Nissan Stadium, you use the four flags. But sure. how do you find that, that out? Great job. That's uh, that was good. Uh, so we'll go out there obviously early. Um, that's one of our biggest process. Whether it's Chase or myself or James, we'll be out there early trying to get the wind gauge. And Randy always comes out there early uh, just to get a good feel of where the wind's going. But yeah, it could be swirling, could be doing a bunch of different things. So we try to get out there. We take an early bus. We try to get out there as early as we possibly can. Now, here's what's sometimes bad about it is all of a sudden you feel like the wind's going one way and then it shifts, you know, because even Nissan Stadium does that uh, sometimes too. But, uh, you know, that part can change at any point in time. We just got to be alert for it, talk to Coach Vrabel, 
Stonehouse, myself, Randy, Caleb, all those guys just got to communicate and just understand where that wind's going. Uh, if you can get Ola back, how much has he helped? Maybe uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. If, you get, if you can get Ola back this week or at some point in the near future, how much will that help? Oh, tremendously. I mean, we, we miss Ola, a uh, guy who's been a really good special teams player for the past couple years, whether it was Pittsburgh or for us. Um, we miss his energy. We miss his juice. Uh, another physical presence for us to go out there and a guy who takes pride in being a four core special teams player um, is going to bring a little bit of the alpha dog mentality that we're looking for. Um, but we're excited if he can be up and be active. Um, that's going to help us out a lot. I guess Ty going into Philly, a team that's you know, creating a lot of turnovers and, and been been good pretty much across the board. Yeah, obviously a hostile environment. You know, we need to uh, embrace that road environment and that road mentality. We need to be clean operationally. Our substitutions need to be good so we have time, you know, at the line of scrimmage to diagnose the defense. And, uh, you know, that's a challenge that we're excited about and something I think we've grown on throughout the course of the year. A lot of people want to make Comparison of Traylon to AJ, and obviously this week with you guys playing the Eagles. What are some of the similarities that they have, but what are also some of the differences in the two? Yeah, I don't think a comparison with those two is fair. You know, they're each their own individual player, and you know, at different points in their career and development and all that. So uh, I'm excited about where Traylon's been trending the last couple of weeks, the way that he's caught the ball well in contested environments, the way he's produced a little bit after the catch. You know, made some contesting catches. So, uh, you know, excited about the trajectory he's on. And obviously, you know, we love AJ. Um, but AJ's in a, in a different phase right now. And Ryan Tannehill yesterday were kind of complimenting how Traylon has grown kind of mentally and attitude wise as, as well. Are those some of the things that, that you have observed, maybe especially in recent weeks? I've just been so pleased with the way he's approached each day. You know, he came out yesterday and. and it was a little bit of a, a down tempo uh, drill, and he's out there. You know, we're having to slow him down. And when you have to slow a guy down as opposed to spur him on, uh, you know it's important to him. And I think Traylon's really come back from uh, you know his time off with a new sense of urgency and, and a, a kind of eagerness to get on the same page with RT, and, and that's been cool to see. Say, so did that maybe flip a switch at all? You know, the, the coming back from from layoff when you can't play and. Uh, you know, did, did that serve as an impetus to maybe change some things with, with him? That's probably, you know, probably a question for him. I can tell you that I've liked what I've seen uh, since he's been back. So, in terms of the snap count with Traylon, is there a reason he you don't see him get as many as maybe Woods and Nick or or even AJ last year? Or is it kind of a progress work? Building up to that. Yeah, I think there's a natural progression into that as you're, as you're coming back from some time down. Um, you know, and I think game situations can also have a, an effect on that. And so we'll see where that goes on a week to week basis. But I think he's getting more and more comfortable, more and more conditioned, and all those things. So excited about where he's at. You guys have always been pretty comfortable <laughs> putting out personnel groups that, that might say, hey, we're running here and go ahead and try to stop us. Um, with these six-man fronts and things that have maybe been a little bit more difficult to run against, is there any inclination to disguise more what you're doing? Um, or are you still comfortable going out there with sometimes saying, hey, we're running it, try to stop us, even though teams are having more success? Yeah, I think we've, I think we've uh, expanded some of those personnel packages a little bit as well. You saw us break the formation uh, last week a couple times out of bigger groupings. Uh, and ultimately, we need to go execute, regardless, regardless of what front they put out there. Uh, you know, so we'll always keep an eye on those things. We'll always make sure that we're staying on top of our tendencies and self-scout and all those uh, you know, different uh, kind of studies. But uh, you know, bottom line is we didn't execute well enough, regardless of what personnel grouping was out there. When you look at the numbers, like over the last three weeks, Derrick Henry, he's getting hit, um, not immediately, but very quickly after he gets the football. Like, what can you guys do? to stop that from happening? And in fact, what is happening to allow that penetration like that? You know, we definitely uh, subscribe around here to it takes all 11 to succeed in the run game. And so there's no one group or one person uh, that we would put that on. You know, all of us, coaching staff included, need to do a, a great job of making sure uh, that we're getting the run started, getting Derek into his fourth and fifth step. And, uh, you know, th that's a, a challenge that we're looking forward to swinging back in our favor. It seems like the Bengals did a lot of run blitzing with the nickel back and also some of the inside backers. Are you seeing more of that now as teams are trying to figure out ways to keep Derek contained? Yeah, you know, 
we get a little careful of, of diagnosing them as necessarily run blitzes. People know we're a run team, so any any blitz is going to be to try to you know gap us out on first and second down. Um, I, I would say that that's probably their most common pressure out of nickel grouping. So that wasn't anything that was new or specific to us. You know, uh, we just need to execute better with those pressures. How was um, Nicholas Petit Frere uh, come along uh, this season? He probably, I guess both run and, and pass wise. Yeah, I think he's maturing with every experience that he has, you know, and, and you see him play with a little bit more confidence week in and week out. Uh, the communication's improving. And, uh, you know, I, th I think he's a, another guy that. As he gets more and more reps, more and more comfortable, uh, he's more and more assured of, of what he sees, he goes and plays faster, and that's always a good thing. As pro, the bigger challenge of the two uh, in general for, for maybe like, like a rookie tackle? I think a lot of right tackles in this league see the defense as best, you know, and, uh, and that's something that maybe shifted from decades ago in, in the NFL. Uh, you know, and Nick's been growing, and I think he's done a nice job with some of the challenges he's had. And like any rookie out there, he's had some welcome to the NFL moments as well. So, uh, you know, he's, he's on a steady progression, and, and we're excited about uh, the future with Nick. How much can Brewer's little run here at center make him a better guard in the long run because he's getting to make the calls and see – more of what's going on as you guys are getting ready pre snap. Yeah, I think that's a great point. It really expands his scope, you know, his focus. And so when you see how it affects different positions, I think it always helps you uh, to play your position uh, more effectively and, and as a team, right? Working in those combination blocks, understanding what some of the challenges might be for Ben or for whoever's at center. Uh, you know, I think that's always a, a very beneficial uh, experience. Derek has historically gotten better as seasons have gone on throughout his career. He's third all time in rushing yards per game in December and January. He says he didn't know, but why do you think he gets better as time goes on? I think it's his dedication to taking care of himself, uh, being conditioned enough to be able to sustain at a high level uh, physically throughout the course of the year. I think it's been a commitment here to how we play football and that he's got guys pushing piles for him and finishing blocks for him in December and January. Uh, where maybe uh, you know some other you know teams or outfits wouldn't put that kind of emphasis on it. Uh, so I think it's a culmination of things, and you know I, I'm excited about where Derek is mentally. And as we approach December, I believe today is December, right? You know, so we're uh, we're excited to see December Derek. Obviously, the big task this week is Jalen Hurts, the triple threat that he brings. What, what do you make of uh, you know what you've seen from him and how he could impact the game passing and running? Yeah, I think he's done a really good job. I think they got a uh, good scheme that fits kind of who he is as a quarterback. Um, again, can, can throw the ball, obviously can run it. Um, we're going to have to be on our game in terms of that schematic QB run game. And then obviously the, the quarterback scrambles that have kind of hurt us in the past. We got to make sure we're coordinated understand what's going on and because he can take off at any moment and he's he's dangerous when he's when he's out there is there something unique to him as far as like running that that read option <clears throat> i mean i think he's he understands it i think he's able to read read those ends and see kind of what they're doing in terms i mean it's all option based on what's going on with the end for the most part um or the second level guy so i think he's got a good comfort level with being able to read it and see it and then when he's got the ball he's like a running back right like i mean he'll slide a little bit um but you don't see him slide every single time like he's taking guys on so we got to be ready to tackle is there anything an end can do there to, to make it less readable, or is he? Uh, I mean, it's, it's hard. We'll see. I mean, we'll see what we have planned as the, as the week goes and as we get to Sunday. But um, it is. He's, he's probably more athletic than a lot of our ends, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, we're going to have to be ready for it and kind of see what we can do to adjust and hopefully play it. How much variety do they have? At, how much variety do they have at the receiving core? And maybe one of the challenges that each of those guys bring. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think they're they're all a little bit different. Obviously, AJ is different than Smith, different from Watkins. Um, I mean, I mean, you guys know AJ, big, strong, really good with the ball in his hands. Probably there's not many better than him with the actual ball in his hands, being able to run, take it strong. Um, <clears throat> so they're doing a good job of getting it to him. And then obviously with Devonte, it's more quick speed, in and out of breaks. Um, I think he's got pretty good instincts for zone. Um, so we're going to have, it's unique because they are different, right? And we got to know who we're lined up on each snap and their skill set. Um, but at the same time, like we're going to have to be able to defend both of them. Does your familiarity with AJ from having practiced against him the last three years 
give you any insight or any edge in terms of how to contain him? Uh, I don't know about that. I mean, I think the guys that have been here against them and maybe went against them a little bit might have a little skill set knowledge on them. Um, but we're going to have a lot of guys who haven't ever practiced against AJ or done anything against AJ. So, I mean, we're going to have to see once we're out there um, what it is, and we're going to have to adjust in game and figure out how they're using them. What has made Andrew Adams go from a guy you kind of plugged in when Amani was hurt to a guy who stays in even, you know, and has a big role even yeah. when Amani's back? He's there. made the most of his opportunity. He's going out there. He's done his job. He's executed for us. Um, again, he's, he's become reliable. You know, and a lot of that just depends on us shuffling pieces across the board, what we got to do to kind of fill all those spots defensively and how we feel like we can get our best five, six guys out there. Um, but he has. He's taken advantage of the opportunity, and he's he's been consistent. Was he a guy you knew before he got here, or did you figure out pretty I quickly? Mean, I mean, I was familiar here? with the name, um, but didn't really know a whole lot about him until he got here from Pittsburgh. I mean, we signed him off Pittsburgh's practice squad, and he's come in here and played a lot of football for us. You guys haven't had the numbers in terms of pressures and sacks the last couple of weeks as they had before. How much do you think of that is personnel related? I know you've been down in terms of health and so forth, and, and how much is it is it not? I guess. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a little bit both. I think uh, personnel always comes into play. I think our ability to execute is a big part of that as well. I think we have to execute better. we got to have a better plan for those guys. And then the quarterbacks we've been playing. You know, like I know Rodgers isn't quite what he used to be in terms of mobility, but he can still get out. Obviously, with Burrow, he can get out, and he did against us. And then, obviously, this week against Jalen, like that that plays a part in a little bit of your ability to rush and truly pin your ears back because they're not going to be standing at seven and a half, eight yards every single time um, where you can all just go to that one spot, you know. Trey Avery kind of struggled against Buffalo when you first, guys, first put him out there. Then several weeks later, he – Reemerges and now it seems like he's, you know, gaining a foothold for more playing time. What's kind of been the growth curve for him? Yeah, I think he's done a really good job. It's, I mean, this league's about improvement, right? Improvement. Whether you go in there, you get thrown in the fire early on as a rookie, and you might struggle. How you're able to respond and come back from that and continue to work to improve for when the next opportunity comes so you can take advantage of it. And he's done that. We saw it with Elijah last year a little bit, right? Struggled early. Didn't pout, didn't put his head down, just worked his butt off so he'd be ready for the next one, you know, and he has. And he's had a really good game last week, and hopefully it continues. When it comes to the red zone success for them, they've taken over that top spot offensively. Like, how, how do you stop that? How do you, I guess, what are they doing good down there? Yeah, I think it's an extension of kind of what they are out in the field. I mean, they're, they're really good running the football, right? They had over 360 yards last week, and you, you see the run game show up down there. I think they're really good up front in the run game. And then they have the, the read elements where you're forced to play with all 11, you know, where some of these other teams, you're, you're not because the quarterback's not quite a factor. So I think that comes into play. And then they got playmakers on the outside, right? So however you choose to defend some of this stuff using different bodies, you're losing some pieces potentially in the back end to help on some of those guys as well. So, I mean, whenever the quarterback is a run threat, it always adds an element um, that makes it a little bit difficult defensively just based on pure numbers. What could Roger have done maybe differently on the, on the touchdown pass late, if, if anything, on that touchdown pass, and also maybe his progress in general? If you could talk about yeah, that. just, I mean, know who these guys are. Right, like no, he's going to go up there. We got to be strong. We got to be physical, and we got to be able to hopefully play through contact and find a way to go play the football. You know, and I mean that was one. I I think Higgins probably out physical him a little bit down the field. Whether he got caught in a bad position at the time where he couldn't get his foot in the ground to to go up for the ball. Um, and he's shown improvement. It's just I think the consistency with him as we've gone. Like there's a lot of good things, and then he'll have those few plays where like what what's going on, you know? So. Just the, just the consistency, play in and play out, and understanding, like, I think with a lot of these guys, it's I'm up every single play. Like, you can never assume at corner that you're not getting the ball. Like, I better know that the ball is coming my way every single snap. And if it doesn't, great, but I better be ready for it. How many missed tackles you kind of get sent to you, and, and how much is just cleaning that part of the game? Yeah, I think we, we were double digits, which was high. Um, I mean, there were. Not even, I mean, the missed tackles hurt us. It was big. It led to some big, big plays for them. Um, but even some of those softer tackles, right, where we were kind of fall, we were on the ground and either possibly cutting them down and they were falling for. There was just a few times where it was a little loose 
a little loose in there where we weren't really standing the guy up, um, where it technically wasn't a missed tackle, but they're adding four or five yards. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I mean, part of that is in space ability. Like, you got to be able to know your ability, know their ability, and then tackling to me is all about technique, footwork, eyes, making sure you got a good base, not doing all the things that hurt you, hopping, crossing over, taking a crappy angle, all the above. So, um, we got to do a good job this week making sure we tackle because those guys are dangerous in space. Jeffrey Sims, he had mentioned communication and co being coordinated in the pass rush is something that kind of broke down against uh, Burrow and the Bengals. What happened there, and then how important is it to have that on point against a uh, quarterback like like Hurts? Yeah, I mean, if if you're if we're not coordinated this week, he's going to make us pay like he did Green Bay last week, right? So um, I think it's vital that you're coordinated, guys. Just understanding what their role is. We do a lot of different things up there. We do. We ask those guys to, based on whatever the rush plan is, whatever the front is. Um, we have different things that we can show based on the front and then do a, a couple of different patterns, um, pick games, whatever that might be, or go straight. Um, and those guys just understanding, making sure they're on the same page, understanding a lot of times it's what's happening away from you, right? Like on that other side of the ball, making sure it gets all the way across because you lose sight of what's happening away from you. And that's when some of those things end up creasing you or getting around the edge on you.